Hi, I'm Matt Hatton from technology industry analyst firm Transformer Insights. We're here at the Things Conference in Amsterdam talking about IoT and LoRaWAN. I'm joined by Elizabeth Schlotten of ECBM. Elizabeth, welcome. Thanks. Tell me a little bit about ECBM and what you do. So we like to call ourselves a digital problem solver okay. because um, it's all about solving a real world problem with a digital technology. Um, the technology is just a means to an end. Um, we start with uh, what does the customer actually want to do, where do they want to go, what's their strategy and how can technology help them mm -hmm. to achieve their goals. And then we help them select the right technology. And if it's IoT and AI, uh, we tend to build the technology ourselves as well. Okay. Um, and work with partners um, if necessary, if, uh, if our technology is not the right fit. And we make the technical solution work for the customer, so interfaces, front ends, whatever is needed to actually help them. Okay, so you can think of you as a specialist systems integrator consultancy, specifically in IoT and AI? Is, is, yeah. is that how yeah, you that's think, about of, right. think of you? Yeah. Okay, and one of the big challenges is obviously around uh, the, the marrying those, the commercial issues with the technical issues, right? Yeah. How, most companies struggle with that. Most companies think of IoT as being a technical challenge, but I'm sure that's not the case, right? So technology is not always easy, and there's lots of components in IoT, sure. but people are usually more difficult than technology. That's absolutely yeah. true. And um, also you have very different interests. You have some people tinkering around with the technology and some people who are saying, when do I get my business results? Okay. Uh, so, and then behavior has to change as well uh, if you want to, to have a successful project. So yeah, you're absolutely right. People are slightly more difficult than technology. Okay, so, but your, your starting point is always, okay, what do you want to achieve yeah. in not necessarily even in IoT, but what do you want to achieve as an, as an organization? And then you kind of go from, from there by the sounds of things. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. What's the company strategy? What are the company goals? Is it about cost saving? Is it about new revenue models? Um, where do you want to go? And then we start looking at how can digital technology like IoT, like AI actually help you achieve those goals? And how do you have to change your organization yeah. uh, to actually um, use the uh, new data that you gain or the new business model that you can implement? Yeah, and it's that change man management that's, that's really the issue, right? We, I think we, we all know that, whether, whether yeah. secretly or, or explicitly, we all know that it's that change management piece. Rather than signing a contract with a technology provider, it's yeah. about how do I get the person who's working in this department to change the way they're, they're working. What are your recommendations on the, those issues? Um, you have to, again, think about what is the outcome that you want to achieve. Hmm. Um, if you have a new business model, so we had this customer who was selling machines, and when you sell machines as a salesperson, you sell something, money comes in, you get a commission. Yep. But then uh, we added a digital service to the machine, so the machine can now tell when it's uh, going to fail. Um, and then uh, the, uh, we sell this service uh, on top of the machine. So the machine price came down, mm -hmm. but we have recurring revenue, which for a company is great. But for the sales guy, um, he doesn't know what to do now. Yeah. So first he has something more complicated to explain to the customer, so it's harder. And then also, how do you actually structure the commission? And as a company, from the moment you change the model, the revenue comes down for a bit before it starts going up again. And um, you have to explain that to your investors. Yeah. You have to change your commissioning model for the sales guys. Yeah. And then you also have to change your production because you have to add technology to the actual machine. Yeah. So it's a, a pretty complicated change process. Um, and it's all about communication and understanding what drives the people to behave the way they do. Mm -hmm. So for the sales guys, a lot of them are driven by money and success. Yep. So you Coin have to, operated, as we say. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to think about how you can make them feel successful in the new model. Yep. How you can make it easier for them to explain this pretty complicated product now compared to what it was before. Um, so um, picking out the ones who are really good at it and showing them as an example, finding the one who influences them and making them a real um, champion for your new product. Mm. Uh, it's all about the motivation, finding the motivation and how you can get them to be motivated by what, you, what you've changed by yeah. the new product. Well, that, that, that move from products to services is one of the, the fundamental changes that IoT can allow, right? Yeah. Now, what, what, what about um, stakeholders? Do you, do you find it's... Uh, it helps a lot if the C-level executives are involved in this decision-making process? Well, it doesn't work if they're not. Okay. Um, so it's pretty black and white. Uh, if in a company-wide IoT project, company-wide uh, change in product strategy, or even an efficiency, efficiency, <laughs> efficiency change in yep. the process happens, 
if it's not supported by the top level, there's too many excuses for the people on the middle level management mm. um, to actually not comply, not do it, stick to the old ways. Generally, we find that on uh, the working level, people are actually quite excited by yeah. process changes yeah. and they really like to become more efficient. It makes efficient. them feel like they're coming yeah. into the 21st century, that, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. But middle management is where it tends to get stuck. Okay, okay, that's, that's obviously always going to be going to be challenging. Um, Tell me a little bit about more about the, the kind of vertical sectors that you work in. Who, who are your clients where, where do you, and where do you find them? So our clients are generally in industries that have either infrastructure or production. Okay. So a lot of them are utility companies because uh, you can make network operations so much more efficient with IoT and AI. Mm -hmm. um, and Laura One plays a very, very big role in that area. Um, they, uh, so we help them build their own Laura Vans. Um, and also uh, we are now in the chemical industry, in the steel industry, um, with this, we work with the cities themselves on smart city projects. So it's quite a wide range of industries, but it, uh, the two like common themes are infrastructure and production. Mm. And do you find it's the, there's enough maturity in the companies that are approaching you to actually make some of these changes? Because historically, a lot of IoT has been test beds, trials, proofs of concept, without anybody really quite understanding what they were getting into. Yeah, uh, it's moving on. So 2019 for me has been a year where uh, quite a few pilots have moved into bigger rollouts, but we're still doing pilots. And generally, most of the projects start with a pilot because mm. you need something to show the CEO, you need something to base your decisions on. And um, no matter how many business cases you calculate, if you can't touch it, you can't see it, it's really yeah. hard to make a decision because it's a major project. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's maturing, it's getting there. And also for us, the new trend over the last few months has been that uh, for Laura Wan, um, chemical parks and industrial parks have started approaching us. So anyone who has a large area, before it was mostly cities and utilities, yep. and now we are proactively being approached by industry. And that's new and that's great for Laura Wan. It's a, a major step change. Okay, that, that's good. And you, you mentioned about POCs turning into real, real business. Is there a secret source to getting to turning POCs into into real business are there some some things that you particularly do well that you, you think help you to, to, to make that that transition uh, I used to work in large companies before I founded ECBM okay uh, so I know that you need uh, determination you can never give up and you need to keep talking to the right people and also it's again about understanding the motivation of the stakeholders yeah. uh, and yeah. uh, if the stakeholder is a mayor then the motivation will be PR. Yeah. If the stakeholder Get, is getting a, elected again <laughs> next year, presumably, yeah. Yeah. If the stakeholder is a business owner, uh, the motivation is uh, to make the numbers look better. So uh, understanding that, and just not never stop talking to these guys and uh, be persistent, and that's really for me that's the secret sauce. Okay, very good, Elizabeth. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very much.